You could not live with your own thumbnails. And where did that bring you? Right back to me. Which is why I'm gonna teach you how to make some dank ass thumbnails, boy! Well, well, well. This video definitely wasn't the most requested video ever. Let's just say a little birdie told me that some of you guys wanted a Photoshop thumbnail tutorial. Make a tutorial on thumbnails. Could you please make a video where you show us how to do thumbnails like you? Can you please show us how to make thumbnails like you? Quality pores. So, ladies and gentlemen, brace yourselves for the most hype, basic, boneless thumbnail tutorial of your life. You. So first things first, you're gonna wanna open Photoshop. If you don't have it, then F in the chat, boys. Once you have opened Photoshop, do yourself a favor and click on the file on the top left and go to new. Then change the size of your preset to 1280 by 720 pixels. And would you look at that? That was a quick step. All right, so first what you wanna gonna do what? <laughs> Alright, so first what we're gonna need is some sort of focus for our thumbnail, like a character and a background. <laughs> to find this, go to Google and find whatever you want. So I'm gonna go with Mike Wazowski. Now there's this one image where his face was swapped. With... There it is. <laughs> Once you have the image, right click and save it to your computer. Then just simply drag it onto your Photoshop. Then find a background of your choice. For this demonstration, I'm just gonna use a random space image. After this, resize the image that it covers the entire thumbnail. Make sure you hold shift to do this or it'll look all stretched out and unprofessional. <laughs> Cool, now we are gonna add a spin effect to our background so we can trip the hell out of everybody. Now this effect is really simple to do. Go to filter at the top of the screen and scroll down to blur, then scooch over to radial blur or whatever blur you'd like to use. After this, change the amount to however much you like, but for this, I'm gonna make it around 20. So this is coming along nicely. Now let's increase the saturation because why not? To do this, click image at the top and scroll down to hue and saturation. Then increase the saturation by just a smidge and change the hue to however you want it. After you've done this, go to the layer which your character is on and do the same. <laughs> let's make him look like Thanos. Alright, now to turn our Mike Wazowski into Thanos, we're going to need to draw those lines on his chin. To do this, go over to the brush tool and change the size of the brush to around 10 pixels and change the colour of the brush to purple. Then, draw the lines on his chin, like so. If you make a mistake or mess up any of the lines, remember just to press Ctrl plus Z to go back so you can try it again. So the thumbnail's looking pretty dank so far, however these ear things are getting in the way, so let's remove them. Scooch over to the eraser tool and change the size of the eraser in the top left. Then, get rid of the ear thing wherever is sticking out of the way in your thumbnails. All right, looking good. Now we're gonna need a Thanos glove. So copy the earlier steps to get an image from Google and drag in Thanos glove image. Then click on the magic wand tool and highlight the background and click delete. Focus, focus, your Ford is now a focus. Once you have done this, press Control T and resize the image and place it on his hand. Now that we have done this, we're going to merge the layers, which will make the next step a lot easier. To merge the layers, click on the eyeballs in the bottom right and all the layers you want to be merged, which for us is the glove and Thanos. Then click Control plus Shift plus Alt and plus E to merge the layers. Now we're going to add some outlines for our Thanos. To do this, double click the layer in the bottom right and tick the box for outer glow. Then mess around with the size, colour and spread of the glow until you're comfortable with it. For this tutorial however, I'm going to make the glow white. Then do the same for drop shadow, making sure that the size is a little bit larger so it appears behind the outer glow. Alright, now we're going to add some text to our thumbnail to make it extra spicy. To add text, click on the add text button and write whatever you want. Don't forget to change the colour, font and size of the text at the top. Now that we have done that, we're going to add a gradient to our text. To add a gradient, double click the layer and tick the box for gradient overlay. Next, change the gradient colour to however you want. For this video, I'm going to go with orange and yellow. Then mess around with the other settings until you're happy with how the text looks. Also, don't forget to add a drop shadow and an outer glow to the text. After this step, change the placement of the text by pressing Control and T and place it wherever you want. Top tip from Marv, if you have more than one text layer and want to add the same gradient effect, you can hold shift and drag the layer effects onto the other layer. Sorted! <laughs> Okie dokie, we're almost done. Now all we need to do is add a couple more effects and then we're sorted. So let's get some lens flares for his eyes, because why not? So copy the earlier step and find a PNG for a lens flare on Google and drag that bad boy onto Premiere. Once you've placed it, duplicate the layer by right-clicking the layer and, well, 
duplicate it. Once you have done this, drag in some anime lines from Google and place it so that it's covering the screen. To get rid of the background, go over to the opacity options under layer and select lighten to get rid of the dark background. Now the thumbnail is looking pretty dank so far, but I think we can add some more effects. Let's get some lightning. Once you've gotten the lightning, resize the image to fit the screen and change the hue and saturation to whatever you like. I'm going to go for orange. Then do the same for other effects that you want to use. In this thumbnail, I'm going to use the same effects on some JoJo symbols and a Photoshop logo. Alright, good job lads. We've just finished an absolute masterpiece. Now let's render it. To render the thumbnail, go to File at the top and scroll down to Export. Then select Export As. Then change the image size to 1280 x 720 as this is YouTube's standard thumbnail size. Once you've done this, click Export and then we're done. So I hope you learned something from this tutorial and got entertained along the way. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments or join our Discord. Link in the description. Anywho, <clears throat> later nerds. Why not?